straight to me for four years. So uh, it was a very nice gesture on the, the devil's part. So did you, did you help prepare the team? What are you going to expect you? Well, I, I, I was involved in scouting, so a lot of the players that you see tonight, I, I helped draft. But, you know, we drafted as a, as a team as well, so. But uh, expect, I think we're going to expect not an easy game, I don't think. I think, you know, the Swiss teams have obviously uh, competed very hard. And, uh, our players are not taking anything lightly. They're actually working. Some guys are working at the job, so. We're getting ready for our game on Saturday against Edmonton and Gothenburg, so it's, uh, it's a good preparation game for us. Were you involved with uh, Nico getting chosen as number one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was very involved. Very involved. So, so you said you have to take him. Is it? Well, like I said, when we draft, we draft as a team. And um, when we came to the end of the discussion, um, I'm the second guy in charge of uh, the amateur draft. So my boss, I'm the, vice, I'm the assistant uh, director of amateur scouting. We make the ultimate decision. So, um, but as a group, we all thought Nico was the best player for us. And quite honestly, uh, I won't say this. I didn't say it before, but the night we interviewed him, I knew he was our guy. Because he's not only a, a great player, but he's just a very, very good human being, very humble. Because uh, what you want in your organization is a future leader. Is that at the draft combine? Or? Yeah, we interviewed him. We had dinner with him and stuff and his agent and so forth. And I, I walk into the restaurant and, and I see uh, Nico and then who's walking behind Nico was Gaetan Buzzard. <laughs> <laughs> and I played with Buzzy here in Bern and in Lugano. I said, what are you doing here? He goes, I'm his agent. Oh, really? Well. <laughs> so yeah, after that interview, uh, it was pretty much set that in my mind, that's who we were going to take. You spoke about uh, Lugano and Bern. What can you recall about those experiences as a player? Do you do you like to come back? Well, I always love to come back to Switzerland. Um, Bern for me was four wonderful years. I mean, even though we only won once, I thought we should have won more. And then my one year in Lugano, we won. And uh, I was lucky because I had some really good fortune. People that trusted me and gave me the chance to come here. Guys like Bill Gilligan and Brian Leffley, who you really think about it, took a big chance in bringing an Italian player to play as an Auslander here in Switzerland. So uh, I came here and did my best and things worked out. And then went to Lugano, Jimmy Cole brought me in there for one year. The mission was to win, we won. So I'm very, uh, very fortunate to have played with some really good players. We know that you had issues with your, with your health. Yeah. Uh, how much do you appreciate now to be back in the hockey world and be able to work? In this well, team? you know, I'm very, very grateful to be alive, quite honestly. And there were some times there it was not looking too good for me. And, uh, Hockey's always been a part of my life, so to be able to get back after such a tough ordeal was, was kind of an escape for me. Yeah. This is my happy place, so I'm very lucky. So, so long traveling in the plane, nothing no is problem. a problem? No problem, very good, everything. I'm back to normal more or less. I gotta lose some weight, but <laughs> I, like to eat. I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still follow Bern and Lugano, what they did in the last years? Uh, they were close, Lugano was close to the title uh, a couple of times. I, uh, I look at the Swiss League every game. I go to the sites, I look at the scores, I look to see who's playing in the league. I say, oh my God, he's still playing, you know? As a matter of fact, uh, last night I went out to dinner and uh, after dinner and met up with uh, Patrick Fisher and Marcel Yenny, who I played with in Lugano, and Lars Leuenberger was there too, and I said, Marcel, when did you stop playing? And he goes, 45, I said, I know, I, used to, I check on you. <laughs> <laughs> and, sorry, uh, about Lugano, uh, if you follow, the, as you said, uh, what uh, do you see they are missing to, to win the title again? Well, Lugano's close to me. They've always had some good players there. And uh, Lugano, for me, was, you know, it's different because Bern, I came here as a non-known player, and then I went to Lugano, and I'm an Italian, so, I integrate a little easier in Lugano, so for me, it's always a good experience at Lugano. What do you expect from Nico and Mirko tonight? Do you think oh, they want to show maybe too much? or? Well, I imagine, especially Nico, for him being this is home club, he's going to be nervous. And, but it's such a wonderful experience and mm. to see the crowd. You know, imagine they'll have, and for us, it's, it's impressive because we know that Nico is from here and we don't really understand it. Like when he comes on the ice tonight, it's going to be crazy for, for him, but also for us to see the appreciation of the Swiss fans for their own players. And, you know, Mirko's from Zurich, 
but for him it's the same feeling. I'm sure he's gonna have lots of family here. So, and I was saying last night to the guys, like you know, the Swiss players nowadays, there's a lot playing, and for these guys to come back and play in their homeland, it's a very special thing. You said some guys are guys are playing for their job, you know, for the, yeah. to be in the first lineup uh, against Edmund. So you think the team will go full speed? Or is it more like an expression, play and let play? No, no, I, I, this, I, I tell you one thing. With our coaching staff, if you don't play full speed, you don't play. Every game. So that's they're going to go full speed. How did you see the Swiss hockey change in the last years? Because back in your days, seeing Swiss players in the NHL wasn't the rule. And now it's not, it's not an exception anymore. Well, like I said, that's a tribute to the, the growth of the Swiss hockey. And, and, and quite honestly, these younger kids now, they're coming through and the, the coachings and the, and the, um, the systems that they're playing. And the, 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 how can I say this? There's a structure here in Switzerland now. And the structure is to get these players able to play at the world level at the ages of 17 and 18. Unfortunately for Switzerland, the best ones are going to play outside. So I, maybe that might be something that they can have to maybe get better to keep them here. But you can't blame the kids to go and play somewhere. And you know, you look at the, all the players like Nico played in Halifax and Mirko played in Everett, and you have the kid Fiala that played in um, Sweden. You know, so uh, these players are ready to play at the highest level at young ages. But that wouldn't be possible if they didn't have the right training from the you know from the Piccolo all the way up. Any young Swiss player that is in, on your radar for? Oh, I can't reveal that. <laughs> no, I don't. I, uh, we'll see them again. I just saw them in Edmonton at uh, Gretzky Halenka, and then I'll see them again in uh, November. So there's always Swiss players, trust me. We have, two we have two Swiss players in our organization that we drafted. You know, we have the goalie, Akira Schmidt. Yeah. This year will be playing in left version, and we have Jill Sen, who's playing in doubles. So we're, very, we're, we're looking everywhere, and we find Swiss guys that we like. We're not afraid to draft them. May I ask you one, uh, one salute to Ticino and Ticino fans uh, in Italian? Grazie per tutto, buona fortuna e ci vediamo presto. Thank you. Va bene? Okay. okay. Ciao. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.